previously on ITW. So today we're going to discuss with you guys online assessments. Yeah, we're going to... You're measuring students' achievements digitally right. on a website, through an app. Uh, uh, be... Data analysis. What it allows you to do is collaborate. Say, I think my favorite is Mastery Connect. Oh, there's another one that I like called Socrative. I don't know. For your trouble, what we're going to do is we're going to pick two people. We're going to pick someone to win the Screen Beam and the Apple Volume Purchase Voucher, another $100. Ilana, Donna, Jake, Jill, Aubrey, where you guys at? Huh. Note, David, I won't be able to do the show this week because I'm in Raleigh at NC Ties. I'm sure you're going to do a great job. Sorry about this, but good luck. P.S. Don't do a giveaway again this week. Oh heck yeah. All alone. Let's go. I got my shades on top back, rolling with the music jack, one on the wheel, one around you, baby. Welcome to ITW, guys, a show that helps you incorporate technology into your classroom. DNA is, DNA is not here. Actually, it's just D today. As you can see, my main man, Aubrey, sold me out up in Raleigh at uh, NZ Ties. At least that's what he tells me he's doing. I really think he's trying to get me back from my little ski trip uh, that I had a few weeks ago, so... Uh, regardless, um, I'm going to do this episode alone, and I want to quickly send a thank you, a shout out, whatever, to all of those who guys, uh, of you guys who sent uh, your feedback in, who made suggestions, whether it be on comments on YouTube, uh, tweets, emails, whatever you did to give us your feedback, you guys, that was amazing. You did a great job. Uh, so I just want to send a, a, a big thank you to those of you guys. Make sure you guys keep those coming. So uh, one thing you guys asked for were these. Huh? How do you guys like those pop-ups? So, uh, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, move on with the episode. Today we're going to discuss e-portfolios. We're going to tell you guys, we're going to define the e-portfolios, explain what they are, and we're also going to give you guys a few options and provide you with the benefits or how can they help you as well as your students uh, in the classroom. Um, we're also going to visit an English teacher in CMS who uses e-portfolios in each of her classes to help her students and that's going phenomenal. I, I watched it firsthand in action and she's doing a great job as, uh, as, as are her students. So uh, you guys, uh, we're going to go visit that teacher and at the very end, what you guys have been waiting for, we're going to announce our giveaways. We have a screen beam and we, have a, we had a $100 volume, uh, Apple volume voucher to give away last week and we're going to announce the winners today. So make sure you guys stick around for this week's episode of ITW. All right, an e-portfolio or a digital portfolio as some people call it, is a digital based collection of student performance over time. Now aside from the obvious advantage of being a web based space to collect student work, it also serves you and your students many other purposes, like tracking progress over time, keeping track of work done to meet uh, the Common Core standards. It also teaches students 21st century technology skills and allows you to keep in touch with parents. Now, portfolios enable an easy way for teachers and students to have open dialogue about the student's work and progress. It gives the students a place uh, in which to showcase their strengths that they might not show in a letter grade or on a report card. Uh, for those who, uh, for those of you guys who teach the seniors, it's also a great place to uh, put all of your information for college. It's a great tool for college applications. A few options for ePortfolios that you guys might want to consider. Evernote, Google Sites, Wikis, Edublogs, Weeblies, WordPress. Now these are just a few of the options you have, but you need to go out there and check what fits you and what fits your students best. Now, what you guys asked for and what we thought we'd bring you is let's go ahead and hear from an English teacher in CMS and see how she is using ePortfolios in each of her classes. Alright guys, I'm here with Melissa Golder. She is an English 4 teacher uh, in CMS. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. 
Uh, Ms. Golder uses ePortfolios in all of your classes as a way to what? Uh, to grade, use it to make sure that students understand the concepts, things you're going over in class. Right, yeah, we use it as a record of learning and a chance for the kids to um, show evidence of their achievements and, you know, also to work on their um, technical skill, you know, using technology obviously is a Teach the 21st century skills. A huge skills. 21st century skill, yeah, that Good. we try to teach. So those are obviously some of the, some of the advantages uh, in comparison to doing it uh, the old way, I guess, um, is the 21st century skills. Any other advantages that, that kind of come to mind real quick using e portfolios? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it it is something that makes it much easier for kids to collaborate and to share their work with people. You know, it's much easier to just send a link to an e-portfolio to number of people really quickly rather than have you know a single binder that you have to pass around and show to everybody um, which you know and that makes it easier for the kids to reflect on what they've done too over time just that accessibility seems to be a big benefit for the students and also just as a college and career resource if they've got it electronically it's much easier for them to use for you know maybe a scholarship process or an internship process or um, you know, also just keeping track of it after graduation, it's a lot easier to keep yeah. track of something once it's housed, you know, in the cloud instead of just a binary book bag. Yeah. Gotcha. You kind of answered some of the some of my next questions, and I was going to ask you, how do you uh, to, do you use the ePortfolio in your class for this, you know, to have the students show their understanding of the concepts and the standards that you teach? Yeah, I mean, it's basically just a collection of demonstrations of mastery. So, um, you know, it might be final projects or final essays or, um, I mean, even a test that they, they did really well on or a lab report for a science class or something, you know, for instance. Um, I mean, in, in English, it's primarily, you know, essays and projects mm -hmm. and letters and things like that. And you use it uh, mainly for the senior exam a lot. And we do use it for the graduation project, yes. So we do their graduation project portfolio gotcha. as a virtual portfolio, which, you know, again, it just adds new levels of, you know, skill and content, things like that, that have weren't there before when yep. we used to do it as the binder. Um, but, I mean, you know, it just, it's pretty simple to align it with your common core standards and just, you know, have a set of artifacts that show mastery for all of those standards. Gotcha. And, you know, it's pretty simple, although in English 4 we have... 41 common course <laughs> <laughs> A little overwhelming. A little bit. Yeah. You, you know, you may not be able to do them all, but you can you can show good evidence of mastery. Gotcha. Now, that kind of leads us into the next question again is, is uh, how do you assess the before those? I know you said you use a rubric. Can you kind of explain that rubric a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, we have a rubric and it grades them for the content, so the quality of the artifacts that they're putting in the portfolio. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, have anything that meets the standard, but have an example of your best work in a specific standard. Um, also, we've got, you know, the kind of quality oriented score. So, does it look good? Did you pay attention to detail? Did you proofread? You know, all of the things that would qualify something to be a publishable piece we look at in the portfolio. And, and you give that the kids a rubric prior to uh, letting them know about the portfolio. Right. Yep. They um, rubric so they know what what is assessed and you know it's assessed. If they know well ahead of time when it's going to be assessed so that they know what needs to be posted for that specific assessment period. Gotcha, and, and one last question. What, um, I know there's a ton of different e-portfolio options out there. Uh, what platform did you choose and why? So we are using Google Sites, and um, it just seems to be the best fit for us because all of our students already have Google accounts and we're using you know, Google Drive and Google Docs and Google yeah. Forms and all of those things in our other other applications in our classes, and so the kids are familiar with it. They've got access to it both on the PCs and on, you know, iPads and other devices that they have. And um, one great thing also is that we were able to set up a template for yes. the students Good. to use, um, a customized template to our purpose that kids can then access through Google and then just modify, you know, to personalize it to their own portfolio. Good. Good. Uh, guys, well, I want to thank Ms. Golder for giving me about 10 minutes of her time and, and helping you guys. Hopefully I answered some of your questions about ePortfolios um, and how 
Ms. Golder use it, is it, uh, uses it in an English 4 classroom. So thanks again for coming on. Appreciate that. All right, so this is the part a lot of you have been really been waiting for, the announcement of our giveaway, giveaway from last week. We have a screen beam. We have a $100 Apple volume voucher to be given away. So uh, our winners are from Cochrane, their technology facilitator, Kim Lighty, and from Randolph, their technology associate, Marjorie Frick. So congratulations to Kim and Marjorie, and thanks again to everybody who uh, participated and who helped out, who sent feedback. It was greatly appreciated. We're definitely going to use uh, that information in our upcoming episode. So, you know what, guys? Aubrey's not here this week. I'm running the show. I'm running the shots. He has no say so. I'm going to give away another $100 Apple volume voucher and another screen beam. Next week's show, we'll announce the winners from this week. So, in order to win, I need you to tell me what you're going to use these for. Just let's be as creative as possible with this, guys. Tell me how you're going to use a screen beam in your class, what you're going to purchase with the Apple Volume Voucher for your classroom. So that's all you got to do. You can tweet us, you can email us, you can comment below, um, but we're going to give it away. That'll teach Aubrey to let me do a show by myself. If he isn't here again, who knows? If he leaves his car outside, I might give that away. So. Um, this is due, guys, again, by uh, next Friday. Make sure you guys go ahead, or actually it'll be this Friday. Make sure you guys get that uh, turned in to us. So that's going to do it for this week's episode of ITW. Uh, remember to like, uh, comment, subscribe if you're watching on our YouTube channel. You can also send us your questions and comments to itw at cms.k12.nc.us, or you can tweet us at CMS to the core because we'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode and make sure you tune in next week for another edition of ITW.